Amen. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, says there is a time for every season. And I'm just so glad, my brothers and sisters, that it's my time. We give for all other folks, all our lives. We give and we give, and that's what we're supposed to do. But I'm so excited today at Miles Chapel. That's right, that's right. I received that word from the choir that says, it's my time. I don't know about you, but I, I received that thing today that it's my time. It's my time. Won't you go to God and pray with me? Gracious God, we're excited today that we have come our bodies are tired and weary because we've been on life's journey all week long and life's road has been rough. And God, we needed that quick word from that song that says, it's our time. God, today we believe in this place that we have been looked over, walked upon. But God, we believe down in our heart that it is our time. But God, since we speak about time, it is preaching time. God, remove all nervousness and doubt from this young preacher as Mary Ann Williamson describes as our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are we not to be? You are a child of God, and your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. So God, since it is our time in Miles Chapel today, God, we receive that word and we're going to give you honor, glory, and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I've been excited all week long because I was coming on Dickie Mill Road. And I pulled up and I saw some brothers that greeted me from the door and then I came in and it was beautiful smiling faces because you do know preachers that sometimes you go places to preach and folks look at you like you stole their joy. But I'm excited to come to a place today that doesn't need the preacher to pump them up with praise. You guys are already fired up and prayed up before I got up. So that just makes it easier for me. So today I am just excited to be in a place I have never been before, but I am excited that we all are here on one accord, serving a good God, receiving that word that is our time. Amen. Since it is time, it's time for me to recognize my boo. Tracy Milton, stand on your feet. And every, I know we all sanctified, but I love Stevie Wonder song. Isn't she lovely? Yes, she is. Yes, she is. And Miles Chapel to all of the ministers of the gospel, deacons, saints, and friends, saints, and the ain'ts. It's good to be in this place one more time. But I'm going to treat you like Kim Kardashian did her first husband. I'm not going to hold you long. So let's go ahead. I know we had the scripture read in our hearing earlier uh, by my sister in Christ who did such a wonderful job. And let me just pause and say, as a school teacher, it bothers me that our black kids don't get recognition often, and when you call their name, they don't know how to come up. But Miles Chap, I celebrate you for celebrating our youth. So when they hear their name call, they know how to stick out their chest and go on up and get what God has for them. So y'all go ahead and do what y'all have been called to do. And so we celebrate these wonderful youth that are here today. But if everybody can, please stand on your feet as we read Joshua, the first chapter. Joshua, the first chapter, beginning in the first verse. I'm so excited to see uh, so many other family members and, and friends that have come out. And to all my brothers and sisters, it's be good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Joshua, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to you, to the Israelites. Verse 3, I will give you every place where you set your feet as I promised Moses. 
Verse 5, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I love this part. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Turn to a neighbor, it doesn't matter who it is, and say, neighbor, neighbor. old neighbor, old neighbor. That, skinny that skinny preacher is going to preach about. It's your turn. Turn that wasn't the right neighbor. Turn to another one and say, neighbor, neighbor. Old, neighbor. old neighbor, that skinny preacher is going to preach about. It's your turn. You may go to your seat. It's always interesting when I tell the congregation, turn to your neighbor and say, that skinny preacher, and y'all are surprised. Yes, I'm skinny, and I love my skinny self, and so why not tell your neighbor? what the skinny preacher is going to preach about. It's your turn. Can you remember the last time someone turned to you and said, it's your turn? For some of us, this question would not require a large amount of time, but for others, it will require us to spend some time thinking back. It might have been that year of 1960 when you were in your yard or your parents' house and you had your white dress on with the polka dots and the ruffled stockings. And you and all your girls were in the front yard playing jump rope. And all of a sudden, one of the girls looked and called your name and said, it's your turn. Maybe, my brother, it was 1975, and your afro was way out to here, and you had that big pick in the back with the afro fist on it. And you were at the basketball court, and they were shooting 21, and that last basket was scored. And, and the captain of the other team looked and said, hey, we just won, so it's your turn. Was it the time that Thursday night when the Cosby show was on and Cliff Parents' anniversary was there and Rudy was singing James Brown, night and day, baby. There was a loud shout out from the kitchen, Greg, it's your turn to wash dishes. I always had to wash dishes when my daddy cooked and he used every pot in the house just to cook hot dogs. <laughs> I hated when my dad cooked. But some mother might be going back in their mind to the time that your son was suspended for the last time. That son walks in the door in the living room where he finds his father who lives across town. They're not together. And his mother was sitting on the couch. And before the son could ask what's going on, the mother looked at the dad and said, I can't do it anymore. I can't do anything else for him. Dad, it's your turn. It's your turn. No matter what your story tells, all these stories have one common thread, and that thread is someone's role has just changed. What you were used to is not what is going to be now. Life as you know it is, is changed, and there is time to wonder if you are going to be prepared, and now it's your turn. For the last few chapters in Deuteronomy, Moses has been led by the Lord to begin making preparations for his death. Deuteronomy 34 paints a more detailed picture of the scene. Listen to this verse. Then Moses went out and spoke these words to all of Israel. I am now 121, excuse me, 20 years old, and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord said to him, you shall not cross the Jordan. This verse alone will preach because there are churches all over the country who leaders have heard from God's voice that your time is up. And you still hold it on to that position for dear life. Moses understood his purpose was to bring the Israelites to the promised land, but not to carry them in. What an awesome test and testimony that the very thing that God has anointed you to do, someone else has to finish. Preach Greg Milton. I don't mind if I do. I am so glad that Moses ain't like us Negroes because we would have been in conversation with God can't you hear us? God, I was almost killed by Pharaoh and his people the, and the Israelites. I brought them from, from Egypt, and you're not going to even let me go into the promised land with them. Come on, God, help a brother out. God, you know that I was with them, and you know they didn't treat me right. You know I was on the mountain, and they was having their idol gods. God, you know that these folks ain't right, and you made me deal with them all these years. And you're not even going to let me go in the promised land with them. For someone in this place, this point of the sermon was for you because your time is up. 
You have been faithful in your position, but now it's time for you to pass the torch to someone else. You're not passing the torch because someone has made you mad. You're not passing the torch because you're disgusted with your position. You're passing the torch because God has told you that your time is up. And you see somebody who is willing and able to take the torch and go on to the next level. But the rest of the sermon places a microscope on the person who is receiving the torch. Someone will be hearing very soon, it's your time from God to carry on his people into the promised land. Others have moved out of the way, and, and now it's time for you to step up into what God has for you. But the mere thought of being in charge of something of this magnitude scares you. But by examining this text, we will use what God has reminded Joshua to remind us that we are more than conquerors, the Jesus Christ. These simple reminders are going to be called the six P's to help us build confidence and competence and commitment for what God has for you. The first P is position. Somebody shout position. position. The verse, first verse of Joshua says, keep your Bibles open. That's what I preach from after the death of Moses. The servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. Did you catch the last two words? Moses' aid. In order for you to be who God has called you to be, you have to understand your position. That's right. That's right. Up until this point, Moses' death, Joshua has been the aid of Moses, but now Joshua is large and in charge. Joshua has to understand that his work for Moses was great, but now he is in charge and the responsibility falls on him. Joshua has to be reminded that he has the position and the power. Most of us in the church love, we want the power. We, we want the power. We want to tell other, everybody else what to do. As long as things are going well, but let something go wrong. You know how it is. Something go wrong, then, well, I was just helping sister such and such. Now we want to give the power and the position to who it's supposed to be. But I love God has called you into that position because of his confidence in your ability. So your position and your power should be used for the glory of God. Yes, yes, yes. So the first thing is understanding your position. But the second thing is, the second P is your preparation. I love what God is saying to Joshua in the second verse. Moses, your servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I don't know about you, but there's two words in particular that jump out to me. Get ready. Now, I know y'all ain't been saved all your life, and so since we hadn't been saved all your life, can you remember that music that you hear when you go to the party? I see y'all are looking at me funny, and I'm going to just bring up a name, Frankie Beverly and Mays, before I let go. Some of y'all already would have forgotten y'all in church and shouted out, that's my jam, but then you caught yourself. We hadn't been saved all our life, and since we're talking about jams, my jam is, was written in 1966 by Smokey Robinson, and it's for the temptations. It's called Get Ready. And I want to use the hook, which is called Get Ready, because here we come. God has sent me to Miles Chapel just to remind everybody of the second P, which is prepare. It's time for everybody to prepare what God has promised. I know that you guys don't have a pastor, but y'all need to go ahead and call the local newspaper and the TV station and tell them to get ready, because here we come. And I know they might ask, do y'all have a pastor yet? And y'all say, no, we just getting ready because God is about to do right. some things at Miles Chapel that's going to be on. And don't just call the newspaper and the TV, but call the police station and tell them we're going to need somebody out here directing traffic for all the calls that are coming because God is preparing us for greatness. Someone in this room has just received that word because God has promised something in your life that is not quite time yet for it to happen, but get started. Start preparing. Ask your neighbor, are you prepared for what God is doing? Wait for an answer, because if they say no, you need to move. If, you, if they say no, you need to move. But, but don't just shout yet, because what I noticed in the text gave me chill bumps, because God begins verse 2 by saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Mm. Now then you, God says to Joshua that Moses is dead, but Joshua could not be who he needed to be to somebody 
died. And, and, and what a word for somebody in this place that you can't be what you need to be until something in your life dies. What do you mean? Some them Negroes that have been in your life holding you back all your life, you need to move away from them and let that situation die. Young people, as we celebrate you, you won't get good grades in your life as long as you keep hanging around folks that are doing worse than you. You need to let that situation die. My brothers and sisters, we want to be who God has called us to be, but we're always trying to save folks that don't want to be saved. You need to move on and be what God has called you to do and just let some situations in your life die. But the third P is prophetic footsteps. We serve a good God that elevates not only your position, but your benefits. We have all experienced getting a new job or a promotion, and, and what is more exciting than that promotion is the benefits that go along with it. It might be that parking space. It might be that parking space with your name on it or the office door that says your name and your position. It might be more paid vacation time or the company car with unlimited gas. But no matter what your benefits are, it does not add up to what Joshua's benefits are in verse 3. I will give you every place where you set your foot. I can only imagine how Joshua must have felt when God said this to him. Can't you see Joshua walking over about 20 steps and looking back at Jesus and say, how about now? And Jesus say, that's, that's yours too. That's blessed too. And how about him running all the way to the end of the road and hollering back at Jesus? I mean, hollering back at the Lord, what about now? And Jesus shouts back, that's blessed too. What a powerful word for the saints in Miles Chapel who have been told it's your time, but did not realize that your steps are already blessed. That place where you have been called to go where other folks won't dare go, you have the confidence and the ability to go because God has already blessed your steps. I don't know who I'm talking to in the place that today, but your steps have already been blessed. And don't even do like Joshua did and look back and ask God, are they blessed? Because he's already given you the ability and the know-how to know that your steps are already blessed. But I know we are ready to shout our way out of here because my steps are already blessed. But the tension of the text is our fourth P which is a peculiar problem. The tension of the text is the part that poses the problem. Verse 6 is where God reminds Joshua about the problem that will arise. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to your ancestors to give them. God reminds Joshua that these people that you are about to serve are something else. Don't forget all the pain and the suffering that they put Moses through. Joshua, in his mind, thinks back to one of those last gatherings before Moses' death where Moses tells the Israelites about themselves. Look at Deuteronomy 31, 27 and, and 29. For I know how rebellious and stick-necked you are. If you have been rebellious against the Lord while I am still alive with you, how much more will you rebel after I die? For I know after my death you are sure to become utterly corrupt and to turn from the way I have commanded you. In days to come, disaster will fall on you because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord and arise his anger with your hands what has made. God is reminding Joshua and all of us that even though your steps are blessed, you're going to have to deal with some saints at Miles Chapel that are going to get on your last nerves, but you still can't turn the other way because it's your turn to be what God has called you to be. And even though you're dealing with this particular problem, you have to be what God has called you to be. Things are not going to be easy because you're dealing with different personalities and circumstances, but don't give up. What a word to that person in this place. Don't give up. God has your back. Even though you are faced with this particular problem, it's comforting to know the fifth P, which is provisions by the provider. God, in this short amount of time, has loaded down Joshua with a lot of responsibility. God reminds Joshua of his position. Joshua is reminded to get prepared. Get prepared, Miles, because things are going to get better. The third thing was that particular problem. But verse 5 is the response God gives to all his anxiety concerning 
his new position. Somebody in here has wanting to step into what God has called for you and you're a little scared, but verse 5 is for you. Verse 5 of chapter 1, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua is human just like us, and I'm sure the pressures of this new position will begin to worry this young brother. Joshua was like most of us. Before he had the position a while, he was ready to resign. Can't you use your Christian imagination and, and see Joshua beginning to doubt himself and God coming over and placing his hand on his shoulder and saying, verse 5, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I can imagine Joshua having his shoulder, having his hand right there and feeling the presence of God. And he slowly lifted his head up with a smile on his face and began to smile. Joseph, excuse me, Joshua raises his head with a smile of assurance on his face. Today needs to be that day for somebody in this place. That your worrying needs to be over because God is standing right beside you with his hand on your shoulder saying, don't worry, I got your back. But too often time, preachers stand behind this sacred desk and preach things that we don't believe. But on this past Thursday night, I was worried about a situation that could have lost me my job. But I just kept saying to myself what God told Joshua, which was, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm a witness that early Friday morning, God touched my shoulder and my situation. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt, Miles Chapel, that God has my back and has never left me without a situation. Sometimes God allows us to go through things which will test our faith. But I am reminded about those three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, how they were tossed in the fiery furnace. The story did not stop there because the flames did not touch them the door opened up and those brothers stepped out with the, my last p which is premier praise the word premier means to show publicly for the first time those brothers in that furnace stepped out giving god the praise that he deserves because no fire flame nor smoke touched those brothers can't you hear the introduction ladies and gentlemen Boys and girls, let me introduce the boys who were supposed to be dead because of the fire, but God. Yeah. Do I have any saints in this place that, that have a but God praise? Well, if, if, if I don't, let me introduce myself. Good afternoon, Miles Chapel. My name is Gregory Milton. I was tore up from the flow up, but Thursday evening, God touched me on Friday morning, everything was all right. Somebody shout premier praise. I don't know about you, but if my introduction wasn't good enough, let me introduce somebody else. He's a man that really doesn't need an introduction. He's a man that is known for healing leprosy. He is a man that can cause the lame to walk and the blind to see. He is a man that, that with just the hem of his garment, he touched somebody. He told some fishermen to stop fishing for, for fish and to start fishing for souls, and he named them disciples. He was celebrated on one Sunday and was crucified on the next Sunday. He was beat, he was bruised and scorned. He was killed so you and I could live. He, he was pierced in his side. He had thorns placed on his head, but, but God... And allow me to introduce him to some folks that might not know him. Some folks might not know him. He is known as El Shaddai, and he's known as El Leon, and he's known as Emmanuel. Some call him Yahweh. Some call him Jehovah. But I love what my grandmother called him. My grandmother called him a way out of no way, a shelter in the time of storm, a friend to the motherless, a friend to the fatherless. It's is there anyone in here that can testify that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? High five your neighbor, say, neighbor, if it had not been 
for the Lord on my side. Where would I be? I don't know about you, Miles Chapel, but I'm feeling good right now because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? That premier praise, that premier praise. The thing I love about premier praise is everybody can't do it. You, you can't praise somebody that you don't know. Uh, again, my brothers and my sisters, I love what this text shows that Joshua can do. Joshua can do. And as the choir sung, it's your time. And my brothers and sisters, like the sermon said, it's your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah. What has God told you that it's time for? My brothers and my sisters, it's time for you to be what God has called you to be. My brothers, I don't know what you was preparing on singing, but God has given me a song that it's a song by Norman Hutchins that said, it's your season. Come on, help me out. To be blessed. God made you a promise. You stood. Come on, stand on your feet as we prepare for them. Open the window. Pour you out and pour you out a blessing. It's your season. It's your season. To be blessed. Come on, one more time. It's your, it's your season. To be blessed. To be blessed. God made, God made you a promise. You stood, you stood the test. He'll open a window and pour you out a blessing. It's your season, it's your season to be blessed. Today, the invitation just simply needs to be, my brothers and sisters, it's your season to be blessed. But before you can be blessed, you need to know that God that we've been talking about. Maybe you don't know him as El Shaddai. Maybe you don't know him as Yahweh. But you need to know him as a friend that will make a way out of nowhere. Won't you come? It's your turn. It's now your turn to give your life to Christ. Come on. Oh, it's your season. It's your season. Come on, clap y'all hands. To be blessed. God made, God made you a promise. You stood. Come on, my brothers and sisters, that invitation is still open. It's your turn to give your life to Christ. What better way to give your life to a God that will never leave you nor forsake you? I can tell you, as he did Joshua and myself, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Won't you come? Oh, it's your season. It's your season to be blessed. How about this verse? I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed going. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed coming in. He's going to open a window and pour, and pour you out a blessing. It's your season. It's your season to be blessed. Come on, let's rock that thing together. Oh, it's your season. It's your turn for prayer. There's some things in your life that God has revealed to you, and you need to prepare for what God is about to do in your life. Not only prepare, but be ready because problems are going to arise. Won't you come? And won't let's pray together that not only we, but the whole entire church, Miles Chapel, will be what God has called us to be in these last and evil days. Won't you come, my brothers and sisters, because it's your season to be blessed. Not only it's your season, but it's your turn. Some of us have been letting other folks step in the way, but now it's time for everybody to step up into what God has for you. Come on, there's, I love that song that says there's room at the altar. It's your oh, it's your season.
brothers and my sisters, we're in good time. We still can make it to occasions or your grandmother's house in good time. But today, what we want to do is spend some time at the altar because I am convinced that as African Americans, we don't speak up on a lot of things that we should. And today, somebody has a burning testimony on your heart and your mind because you know it's your turn. And it's time for you to speak that thing because no matter what your age is, God has something for you. And since he has something for you and it's your time, you need to tell your brothers and sisters what time it is for you. And since it is your turn, somebody go ahead and tell the congregation what is your turn.